Today I'm gonna attempt to install a DIY roof rack and two solar panels on my Ford Transit Connect camper van. I've been making some good progress on the van build so far and I'm really excited to show you. But honestly, this part of the build has been such a headache and a nightmare. From figuring out all the little parts, pieces, and sizing to having issues with my solar panels, this has been a wild ride and I'm happy to finally have it done. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes if you're doing a similar project. All right, let's mount these solar panels. Let's start with how I built my DIY roof rack. You may have seen in a previous video, I took off the old roof rack and sealed the holes with silicone as a temporary solution so no water would get in. A lot of these utility vans come stock with threads to mount a roof rack, but I wanted to reuse the holes that were already cut in my van. After weighing a few different options, I decided to go with the Unistrut method. A lot of other van lifers go with this method, so there's a lot of great videos on how to do it this way. I actually bought some PDF plans from the Van Kooks YouTube YouTube channel which basically shows just all the parts you need and how to assemble everything so that was definitely a huge help on this project so thank you so much to the Van Kooks appreciate it so let's go through some of the parts I needed for this project I went to Home Depot and bought all this crazy hardware which includes three of these 10 foot 14 gauge unistrut channels a few different sizes of these rubber stoppers a bunch of these fancy magnetic square washers that fit perfectly on the unistrut like 20 of these three bolts, 20 of these nylon locking nuts, a whole lot of 3 8 washers, some truck bed coating to paint the Unistra, and 8 Z brackets to mount the solar panels. All this hardware is really what makes this project kind of a headache. There's so many parts and pieces and like I'm pretty new to all this stuff. I've never done this before so yeah doing this was crazy for me. <laughs> it's kind of like Legos as adults. The first thing I did was take my rails, clean them off, and get rid of some of the stickers that were on there before. This is to prepare our surface for painting. Once the rails were clean, I took my black truck bed coating and painted the rails and the square washers too. I just let these rails dry overnight. They're looking pretty good. And my friend Brian's coming over now to help us install them. So let's do this. We did a bit of a dry test run to see how everything would fit together and what sizes we needed to cut the rails. Basically, we're gonna cut two rails going the length of the van. Let's call these our main rails and three rails for the width of the van. Let's call these our crossbars. Before we start cutting the rails, we have to get the silicone off that was sealing the holes before. Just look at these chonky boys. Now let's cut our rails. We marked the spots where we wanted to cut and used an angle grinder to chop these bad boys up. We softened the edges with a sanding disc and then hit it with some more paint. Before we slap those rails on the roof, we have to do some flipper doodles first. <laughs> Did I tell you that I recently learned how to do a front flip on flat ground? I'm pretty stoked on it. But anyways, back to the roof rack. We pre-drilled some holes in our rubber stoppers so the bolts could go through. These stoppers are so the rack can sit more level with the curve of the van, as well as raise the bars just enough to where the nuts can screw into the bolts through the crossbars. Hopefully that makes sense. We're almost ready to slap on our main rails. So we got everything preset and we tried our best to line everything up with the holes. We also had to cut some of the stoppers so the rails would sit more even. We also added this extra stopper in the middle just for some added support. There's always going to be little quirks and challenges that you have to face along the way. It's basically just problem solving and patience. Sometimes it can be really frustrating, but you just gotta hang in there. We put some beetle tape down around the edges of the holes and also added some marine adhesive sealant to the inner parts of the stoppers. Then we started to bolt the rails down. Slap them up there, dude, it's solid. Strap me up here, dude, let's, let's go, dude, let's go. <laughs> this thing's not going anywhere. I say that in every single one of my videos, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> we did the thing, we put it on. We put some beams on the van. Next to Spotty. We, so we, we put the, there was um, metal pieces and we we took we cut we cut the we cut the we cut the and then 
and then we're on they're on the van you you could do so you this thing is looking pretty good but we're not done yet we still have to add our crossbars and our solar panels <sighs> this is where things get quite difficult and stressful i hope you're ready because it's story time so i needed to figure out which solar panels to get and what wattage they needed to be i used this awesome template from the explorers.life youtube channel which helped me calculate how much power i would need like what amp hour battery i would need what inverter to get and how much solar power I would need. I wanted to get 600 watts of solar so for that I needed two 300 watt solar panels. I went to Google and searched for some 300 watt solar panels and found some from Bougie RV and they were a perfect size that would fit on my roof. So I was super stoked. I thought it was gonna be pretty seamless and easy but boy was I wrong. I ordered these two 300 watt panels and about a week later I received six 100 watt solar panels, which is not what I ordered or not what I thought I ordered at least. So I was really confused and thought that they had just sent me the wrong thing. So I emailed support and they told me that they don't sell a 300 watt solar panel. And what I ordered was six 100 watt panels, even though it said clearly on the website in their description and on the listing and on Google that this is a 300 watt solar panel. I even had friends take a look at the listing to see if I was just like not reading it properly or something. And they were like, yeah, it looks like a 300 watt solar panel. <sighs> Bougie RV actually changed the listing on their site now because of this. So you can't go back and look at it now, but this is just the beginning. It's, it's about to get worse. So support said that I can return the panels and get my money back. And they would even send me a shipping label, which I don't know, I thought meant that they would pay for shipping because it cost me $318 to ship the panels back to them. I don't think I should have to pay $318 because the listing and the description on their website is inaccurate. In the meantime, I had to find some new panels to order and it turns out that there's not really any 300 watt solar panels that are small enough to fit on my van, at least two of them, and they're all too big. So I had to downgrade to two 200 watt solar panels, which is okay, like I can live with that. So the new panels I chose were the smallest 200 watt solar panels I could find, and I ordered them from Bougie RV again, but this time from their Amazon store. It's a little unfortunate because the panels I thought I ordered in the first place were the perfect size for my van, and the new panel panels I'm ordering are just barely gonna fit on my van. I already cut the Unistrut rails to fit the original panels I bought from Bougie RV and later in the video you'll see that I have to move the rails up. It's just such a headache because if their listing was just accurate in the first place I wouldn't have to do this. But the story continues. The new panels arrived to my house and one of them is shattered. This is really frustrating seeing as I'm already dealing with returning the other solar panels as well. So I sent one of the panels back and ordered another new one. Meanwhile, I was chatting back and forth with support about the original panels that I ordered and it was really just confusing. Like they sent me the money back for the panels but they didn't cover the cost of shipping. So I was kind of confused and I was upset by that. So I had to fight this thing with them. And I told them like what I just told you guys, like, hey, like I should not have to pay $318 because the listing on your site is not accurate, it's misleading. The whole thing really just seemed unprofessional to me, like they took days to reply to me, like I had to email them multiple times to see if they actually got my message because it took them like five days to reply. I was talking to like five different people and every time I got a new email it was a different person and it sounded like I was just talking to a robot, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> they told me they can't pay for shipping and I was not having that but I, I told them I'm gonna be leaving some bad reviews and that I'm gonna be making this video so that obviously did something because after that they said they would pay 50% of the shipping so like $160 or so and I was like if that's the best you can do I'll take it but obviously I want the full refund back because this was your mistake I think it was their mistake and I shouldn't have to pay for that so they sent me back 25% of the money which was like $80 or something and I was like what is is going on like they sent me half of the half that they were supposed to send me <laughs> like what is going on you guys so they were like oh my bad and then they sent me the other 25% and I was like okay 
And as for the cracked panel from Amazon, I waited over two weeks and still hadn't got my money back for that, but the tracking said it arrived within a week. So I emailed them again and just said like, hey, my panel arrived to you a week ago, where's my money? And then they sent the money back and I was like, okay, cool. Like I have to be the one to like email you and figure this out. Like you can't just put it back in my account. Like I don't know what's going on with Bougie RV, but I cannot recommend them after this. I'll be leaving some bad reviews and yeah, just do with this information what you will. They seem to have good reviews and good customer service. So that's why I went with them originally. But yeah, overall just a terrible experience, a headache, lost a little bit of money in the process. But on the flip side, I do have both my panels now, and I'm happy to say all that nonsense is behind me. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to mounting our solar panels. I did another little dry test to see how the panels would fit on the roof with the crossbars, and because these panels are larger than what I was originally planning on, I had to move the rails up quite a bit. Almost too much for my comfort, actually. <laughs> This was really annoying because I basically had to redo all the work Brian and I had just done. Reapplying the sealant and butyl tape, bolting in the rails by myself, whew, a lot of work you guys. I also needed to cut the holes in the main rails just a little bit so all the holes would line up properly. Getting all these holes and everything to line up was honestly a super challenge. But I successfully moved the rails up and now I think I'll show you how I'm mounting these crossbars. This is basically how it's gonna go. We got our 3 8 bolt going through both the bars, a few washers on top, two of the square spacers in between both the bars, another washer on the bottom, and a nylon lock nut at the bottom as well. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing for every crossbar, so it's gonna be six in total. Now let's take a look at our solar panels. I'm gonna mount these with a bunch of Z brackets, but first I have to cut some holes in the brackets for my 3 8 bolts to fit through because the holes aren't big enough on the Z brackets. So I used this step bit that I bought to cut those holes. Next, I'm going to try my best to line everything up. I used a bit of tape to help me out. I think it helped a little bit. So I flipped over the solar panels and marked where I needed to drill some more holes for the Z brackets to attach to the solar panels. I drilled some more holes and next I'm going to use the nuts and bolts that came with the Z brackets to attach them to the solar panels. I tried looking everywhere to find nylon locking nuts for these but I couldn't find them at any store so I just used some thread lock to lock them in place instead. I bolted all the brackets into the panels and now everything is finally starting to come together. I'm about ready to install the crossbars and solar panels, but first I have to install this junction box for my solar panel wires to go through. Some people like to call this thing a gland box, but I like to call it a junction box. I placed it in a spot where water was least likely to get in. In this case, on top of one of these ribs is a good spot, because water will mostly travel through the bottom. Unfortunately, this thing is kind of awkwardly shaped and my roof has all these ridges, so there's no perfect spot where I can sit flush to the van but I think this spot will be fine. First, I drilled a hole, filed down the edges, and hit it with some paint. Then I added this little grommet to protect the wires from the metal. I put the wires through the junction box and started feeding the wires through the hole. Then I threw some beetle tape around the junction box and pre-drilled some holes for my bolts to go through. I used my own bolts for this and not the screws that came with the junction box. So I slapped that thing on there and hit it with some sealant afterwards. And yeah, this thing is super solid, not going anywhere, we're good to go. Lastly, I threw the panels and crossbars up on the roof lined up all the holes and it all just barely fit. I'm talking like micrometers here, you guys. Super close. Getting all the locking nuts in these tiny little spaces was super challenging as well. It took me quite a while trying to get everything nice and secure, but somehow everything came together. Woo! Finally, it's done. Whew, man, what an exhausting project. Definitely harder than I expected, but it was a good learning experience and I'm super happy to have 400 watts of solar to give me power when I'm on the road. 
All in all, this thing is super solid. I'm pretty confident that nothing is gonna come flying off when I'm driving down the road. Everything is bolted down very securely. Obviously, I tested it driving around a whole bunch and yeah, super solid. So what's next? I'm gonna start building some furniture and I actually already started on building a sick slat out bed, which looks so cool. Can't wait to show you guys. But in the meantime, if you wanna watch how I framed my van, definitely watch this video. Thanks for watching, bye.